Good evening, everyone. Michelle Allen here, co-founder of Monkey's House, a dog hospice and sanctuary with our weekly Tuesday Night Live. Grateful to be here tonight. I've missed the past couple lives. Um, left everything in Jeff and Holly's very capable hands. Um, now we're back with me. How are you guys doing tonight? Can you hear me? Wanted to update you on some pups. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is Iris. Um, oh, hi, Sandra. Okay, good, good. So good to see you, or sort of see you. Um, the first pup I want to talk about tonight is Iris. She's uh, one of our beagles, and uh, recently featured her um, after she'd had some uh, some manual work done in physical therapy where her crooked head went, from, went to being straight for a little while. She started this morning with a swollen back leg and not really wanting to work, and not really wanting to walk and it's actually gotten a little bit worse. We're in touch with Dr. Knight. Uh, she's going to get x-rayed. She'll get an exam. Um, I'm hoping it's Lyme disease. She has an underlying uh, hemangiosarcoma uh, and hers is uh, dermal. It's, it's uh, in the tissue of her skin and we've been managing her very holistically. Uh, she Every time she gets like a big, bright, purpley, nasty growth, which they pop out really fast, um, we, we get it taken care of. You know, we're, we're on top of all that. But just because we can see what's growing on the outside does not necessarily mean we can see what's growing on the inside. She uh, is in stage four kidney failure, and she's lived with us for over a year in stage four kidney failure. She also has heart arrhythmias. Uh, so, you, you know, when people say, oh, do this, do that, it's not always the best answer. Um, hi, Sharon. Beagles are the beagles are awesome. Beagles are awesome. Uh, hi, Brenda. Thank you for the stars. They really they really are awesome. Uh, so we've we've done conservative management with uh, food therapy, supplements, and and lots of exercise, and she's done really well here. Um, but I'm nervous about this um, now. Lyme disease, one of the things they say is it's the great imitator and it can mimic anything. But one of the symptoms, if you go by what the symptoms are, is joint swelling and pain. So I'm really hoping that that's what it is. But uh, I'm a little bit worried that it's something worse. Uh, she ate breakfast this morning, but she didn't want to eat dinner. And when a beagle doesn't want to eat, you're in trouble. So, so please keep her in your thoughts and prayers. Hey, buddy, you're okay. Okay, next I'd like to talk about Belinda, our sweet little pug, who had a face full of food that I featured last night. Um, I was surprised how many people are familiar with the word in Zapunad. Um, my grandfather used to say it when I was a kid, and um, later we continued the tradition at our family meals, and we even shortened it to, in, you know, to Zap, um, just Z-O-P. And, you know, if someone was making um, marinated tomatoes, that's very, it's very uh, big in my family. It's, it's just sliced tomatoes that are marinated in olive oil and fresh garlic. The more garlic, the better. Um, and so if someone was bringing the tomatoes, someone else would, would bring the zop bread. And the first time Belinda did this, she, to see her walking right now, she's very uncomfortable. Um, her front legs, it's her shoulders and her elbows that are shot. And on x-ray, they don't even look like elbows anymore. They don't even, you know, there should be like two nice sharp bones here and one straight bone here. It just looks like zigzaggy mess. Um, she doesn't really want to lift up her back legs because she doesn't want to put all her weight on her front legs. Um, she can't really move her front legs because they aren't working that well. So so that's what that part of her is, is like. Um, but put some food in front of her. And she is the happiest little girl in the world. And I mean, she snorts and it shoots out her nose, it shoots out of her mouth. Um, and she just really enjoys eating and, and licking the bowl after it's done. She just, she just has a great time with it. Um, some people have suggested that we try CBD. Um, some people have suggested that we try homeopathy. Um, we have tried a tremendous amount. I, I didn't realize I was gonna be so closely looked at when I wrote that post. Um, CBD is a fabulous, fabulous resource, but it's for the dogs. It helps. It helps a lot. It's it's pretty. It is pretty miraculous, and for the dogs, it doesn't. It doesn't. And and unfortunately, CBD has not helped her. Uh, so, it's it's one of those things that 
when, when we had Randy here, Randy would have seizures all the time and it absolutely made a world of difference for him. Uh, and we had it in every room of the house and in my purse all the time in case he had a seizure. And I didn't want to be without it. It doesn't have that effect on Belinda. Um, so that's where, that's where, you know, it's, if it's not helping, you don't stick with things that aren't helping because it's stuff that they don't need to be on. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining us tonight. Hi, Lori. How are you? I think we're going to have our first special guest star. Start tonight with Ariel. Can you, can you, how can we get you to see up? Hey, hey, easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy, easy. Can you see up? Right there, you got people there saying hi to you. Hi, Linda, how are you? So it's funny, when I have Ariel in my arms, she seems, well, she is, she's very frail. She's very vulnerable. She's, um, hi, Paul, thank you for joining us tonight. She, she's, she's, she feels elderly when I'm holding her, but put her in her cart and she is like greased lightning. Um, I mean, she, she takes off, um, she won't run away from me, she'll, but she'll run towards me. So if someone else is walking her and I come out, she just takes off. And if I, I have this little, I have this different route that I'm walking right now, which is there's a, like a, I don't want to call it a gutter, but there's a small gutter alongside our driveway. And if you just climb across it, um, you walk across our front field and there's just some different smells that we haven't smelled for a while. So I've been walking down to the end of the driveway, crossing the gutter and, um, letting the dog smell all over the front yard. And man, she pulls right up to the edge. She knows right where to stop. I barely lift her cart and then she gets to the other side and takes off running. And it's just, it's crazy. And it's amazing how freeing the gift of wheels is for her. So it's, it's just, it's a gift. She's back to eating anything and everything in sight and doing really, really well with it. Um, Hi, Brenda. Um, let me see. Hi, Mark. Thank you for the stars. That triggered a stars party. Um, if if we can raise 2,500 stars in the next five minutes, um, Facebook donates 50 bucks to us from their from their stars program. So, and just so if anyone doesn't know, um, Mark, I'm going to out you. Mark Carey is Aunt Tracy's dad. Um, so that we have a celebrity amongst us. Hi, Renee. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Linda. Good, good, good. Okay. Can everybody hear me? It's my, I'm getting this thing saying that we have a low, a low connection and I we're actually hardwired in for the first time ever. And I was hoping to not get that notification but I'll just, I'll just assume that we're all still there and it's all going okay. So just, just seeing how Ariel looks here, and then I think I've shared plenty of videos of her just running. Uh, you, can, you can see that there's, that there's quite a bit of difference in her when she's, when she's uh, you know, in her cart. It's, it really, she really is independent and fierce. She gets in the house and she'll bark at your feet, um, be kind of yappy and complaining. Um, do a, do a lot of barking and it's, it's pretty, it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Oh, Brenda, thank you for voting for us. And Brenda, thank you for the stars. Right now there's another Betty White challenge going on and it's a, it's an, it's a company that's asking for people to vote every day. And the voting is really simple. I have it on the main page. Um, hi, Kathy, how are you? Um, I have it on the main page, uh, and you, you just click on it. And the, the, the hardest thing to do is to find Monkey's House. You scroll down until you find Monkey's House, and there's a little box that says vote. You just click on that. They're not, they don't seem to be asking for a lot of questions or information or anything. Um, but we can vote once a day, every day, until February 11th. And the top three rescues with the most votes receives $1,000. So if anyone's interested, I'll be posting and asking for votes lots of times. Hi, Corinne. Thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you, Lori. I, I worry about it. When it says that it's low, we are in the Bermuda Triangle of, um, of uh, 
cell phone technology here. Part of it is me, but part of it is really weird, bad, bad um, reception. Hi, Re. Thank you so much. You were married in December. I'm, I'm sorry, in September? Oh, no. It might be, it might, might be November. In lieu of favors, you donated to us. Thank you so very much. I truly appreciate it. That's an incredible thing. Wow. Thank you. Sandra, thank you for the stars. I truly appreciate that. Let me just get over here. We're getting ready to go to Pet PT tomorrow. Um, there are several Monkey's House blocks to vote on. Can they be combined? I don't know. I didn't realize there were several. I didn't realize there were many blocks. I'll have to. I'll have to look at it and maybe contact them. Uh, it, it says if you don't see your favorite rescue, you can uh, nominate them. And it might be that we did that people didn't see us in their search, so they nominated us. I'll, I'll see what we can do about that because that would be kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> that would be kind of crazy. So we're getting ready to go to Pet PT tomorrow. Um, it's, the weather's actually been pretty good here this week, and uh, we don't have the bus loaded up in advance or anything tonight. We're going we're gonna to do it all tomorrow, and uh, everybody will be going, but Iris will not. We're, Iris is going to get an x-ray first before we do anything else, an x-ray, an exam. And some blood work so we'll see what's going on with her but everyone else will be going so that'll be great they'll have a busy day and you know what's nice is even with belinda she's she's really frail and we don't want to strain her or stress her but when they do the um the cold laser she just lays on their lap and then she eats cookies so she's she gets loved on she gets a procedure done that will help her with pain and she eats cookies it's not it's not a bad day it's, it's not a bad day at all and one of the guys you heard yiping earlier was uh, Bumble. He's going to go tomorrow as well. Bumble has a, uh, he likes to poop on the bus. That's kind of his big famous claim to fame. Hi, Nancy. Okay, good. Thank you. Hi, Amy. Thank you so much for the stars. Truly appreciate it. Um, so that's, that's his claim to fame, but he loves to go. It's funny. He's very quiet in the house as far as his presence. He does not come up to meet you. Um, but if you pick him up, he's quite happy to settle in your lap. Uh, but he, he's good for a few loud squeaks here and there, which can be very entertaining. I'm trying to look around here. Um, Pugsley is doing well. And he, uh, he, it's very funny. He, when, when he walks very well on a leash, he's very quiet. He's, you know, not really much trouble at all. But tomorrow morning, he will wake up and be a handful. And I don't know if they, if he, so he's blind and deaf. I don't know if he smells the bus, if he feels the vibrations of the bus, if he somehow hears some frequency of the bus, because it can be loud. Um, but he will come out of the house at a trot. And it's, he's got a very fancy trot. He looks like he's prancing. And he'll, if, if you're not going straight fast enough, that's okay. He'll just go in circles around you. And I mean, like, as long as the leash is, He'll, he'll go around you look the way a horse looks like when they're being when they're being lunged that's exactly it's exactly what he looks like um, and then he joins the get to leave early group um, because patience is not something he's graced with hi Brenda thank you for the stars we really appreciate them um, let me see. Uh, chase is laying here too um, our little diabetic guy he gets a dental next Wednesday not this Wednesday but next Wednesday it's uh, Dental, dental health is so important to us, and we're so meticulous about making sure our dog's mouths are in good shape. Um, it's something we work very hard for, and sometimes it's something that we take risks for. Um, this is one of those things. We, we've, we're kind of backed into a corner. When he joined us, his mouth was a mess, his diabetes was uncontrolled, his blood work was a hot mess. He's been with us a while now, and he, his blood work has straightened out reasonably well his blood sugar is has straightened out reasonably well um but he's losing weight and his mouth is just a nasty infected mass mess we've been pulsing him on antibiotics um i have to be careful what i give him anything just there's so many things uh, we have a really good colloidal silver mixed with manukani that we like to use you can't it, it really messes with his sugar his specifically because i give it to him and then i check um so we're limited with our little extra tricks that we can do. Um, 
And then Dr. Knight is always concerned when she's, when she's doing anything, when she has a diabetic on the table, that their blood sugar can just crash. Um, so he's actually going to get part of his breakfast next week and just a little bit of insulin. Uh, and then he'll have, he'll have probably most of his teeth removed. And uh, then we'll just watch him like crazy, watch him like crazy. But um, it's one of those things that's scary going through it. Um, but it needs to be done. His teeth bother him. And I, I can't imagine, I, I can't imagine what it's like to have that many bad teeth in your mouth that you're losing weight. Um, my teeth are great and I can't lose weight. So I, I, I just can't imagine how he feels. Um, he does love his food. Hey, sweetie. You good right there? He does love his food. Um, so, uh, you know, I certainly have my nerves, uh, but it's one of those things we don't really have a choice. And if, if we can get through this, it'll make his quality all the more better, which, which is something we all want. Ariel, who we just saw, is being treated for a urinary tract infection. Her urine always has a baseline smell to it that's kind of weird. And uh, she's been cultured several times and treated several times for urinary tract infections. She has issues with incontinence, and because she drags herself on those two legs, she is uh, she is uh, prone prone to urinary tract infections. She also doesn't she's not able to empty her bladder all the way, so we do express her bladder, but it still leaves them at high risk. Lori's asking what antibiotics are good for an abscess tooth. Uh, clindamycin is is what we use here the most, and it's it's good stuff. Um, it's just that abscessed teeth hurt bad. They hurt really bad. Um, I remember many years ago, um, 2015. Okay, this is my weird memory. October, Tuesday, October 27th, 2015. So I guess I'm channeling Sophia here from the Golden Girls. But um, that was our first big surgery um, that we did with, I think Dr. Morgan saw seven pups and operated on five of them. And uh, I think she wrote on, she did the Facebook post that night. You can go, there's a search bar on our, on our page. You can type in teeth, t tumor teeth and testicle Tuesday. And I'm sure her post will come up um, saying how everyone did. But um, I got to be in the back. Their, their office was closed that day. She, she, she did surgeries on our dogs on a day when the office was closed and several of the techs had donated their time to help keep our expenses down. This was in the very beginning. And um, I got to be in the back um, and uh, was, was looking at, was watching a dental and Cindy was showing me, for those of you that know Cindy from Dr. Morgan's office, she's lovely, she's still there, but she was showing me Lil, who was a tiny chihuahua. She was maybe four pounds. She was brown and white. She looked a lot like Elope. Very fragile, very proper. Not the best appetite, but I wouldn't have pegged her to be a dental mess. And when she was unconscious and Cindy was looking at her mouth, she was showing me all that was wrong with her mouth. And when she pulled out her top, her top, um, oh, I can't think of it, her top canine, one thing that really blew me away was the part, you know, it's the big fang tooth. The part that stuck out was not as big as the part that was on the inside. And when I got done looking at how big the tooth actually was, the hole filled up with pus. And I thought, oh my goodness, no wonder her appetite isn't great. No wonder she's got these issues. And it, it, it blew me away. It really blew me away. Um, and then what really blew me away, hi, Tracy. I'm talking about Lil at her dental right now. Hi, Dee. Thank you for joining us. Um, what really blew me away was after, I think Lil lost eight teeth. And that's a lot for a, a tiny little dog. That's a lot, but that's what needed to come out was I think one or two days later, I then did another post showing her killing a fish stick. So if you don't know what a fish stick is, it's a, it's a cod skin. It's about, for her case, it was about this long. It was maybe this thick. Um, I would say it's probably the consistency of like a beef jerky kind of a thing. Like you, can, you can't really chew it, but you know, it takes, it takes a little work to eat it. And um, she was killing it. She was dragging it. She was swinging it. She was growling at it. She was drooling on it. And she was having a blast. And, and I would have thought that she needed to eat mashed potatoes for a while. Nope. She was fine. She felt so much better without her painful teeth. And it was just, it was just the right thing to do. And 
the, the pups keep teaching me. They keep teaching me all the time, and it kind of helps me be brave when I need to. Um, now, when I say be brave when I need to, we, we try to minimize all of our risks. Um, uh, you know, so, so we're, we're doing what we can to, to make sure that they have the very best quality filled lives. But it's helped me to understand how serious and how bad dental disease can be. It's, 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 I keep saying it's no joke, but it's no joke. Um, Sweetie, do you want to go down again? You don't look that comfortable. Hey, buddy. Can I talk about you? Are you sleeping comfy? All right, our next, our next good boy hey, is Tiggy, and he's laying right next to me, and he's not coughing right now, so I don't want to pick him up. You do want to be picked up, okay. Um, he's, he's not coughing right now, and he has issues with coughing. Um, but he's just, the past couple days, he's been running around the house, he's been barking like a crazy person at Carbon, which would drive the average person nuts. And thank goodness Carbon is such a great sport about it. Um, but, you know, so he clearly doesn't like big dogs. Um, but just running and jumping and barking and mooching and begging. And um, he's, this, I, I don't know if you remember the post I did where he, where I was outside and he jumped up on my leg, just his front paws. Um, and I got this beautiful picture of his face and he was just so expressive. And of course I picked him up and started crying and. You know, I think I taught him a really bad thing. So he jumps up a lot. Now, he's he's 10.6 pounds. It's not really a problem. Uh, but it, it's very precious. Well, he's now learned to not jump on you, but rather stand in front of you and kind of beg like this with both legs, like he wants to be picked up. And, well, he just gets whatever he wants. He does it to me, he does it to Holly, and we're just done. We, we're just done. <laughs> so... It's, it's really kind of a neat thing. Really, really, really special. Aunt Claire was here this morning, um, working the breakfast working the breakfast shift and help, helping to take care of the pups. She brought Millie with her. Millie uh, was here for about a year. She came from um, South Jersey Regional Animal Shelter. And then she was placed in Forever Foster with Aunt Claire. And she's got um, two mammary glands towards her, towards her bottom that look a little more puffy than what they should. And Millie is not a, not a fan of being examined um, at all. <laughs> so I, 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 I did what I could to, without risking all of my hands. And uh, we're gonna get her in to see Dr. Knight to see if there's anything we need to be concerned about. Um, she lives with chronic allergies and her immune system is always on overdrive. So it's something we don't wanna take anything for granted. There's lymph nodes in that area. Um, there's a lot of things that can, can be issues. So we want to stay on top of it and avoid any problems that need to be. And if her body is just changing, that's okay. Um, we just want to know what, know, it, know, know what it's about. JJ is behind me. Um, JJ is a piece of work. Uh, he had a seizure on Sunday, but uh, came out of it on his own and is doing well. Hi, Lori. Your bulldog had a big knot on her face. Took to the vet yesterday. And the antibiotics. Okay, so, so you think the knot was an absent? See if they will help us. I'm sorry, I, I can't read that well. <laughs> um, hang on one sec. Went to the vet yesterday, started on antibiotics to see if it will help with swelling. If not, she'll have surgery because it's abscess. Yeah, abscess teeth hurt bad. They hurt bad. But good on you for getting her into the vet right away. Hi, Brenda. Dogs have 42 teeth. Your little guy had severe period disease, periodontal disease when you adopted him from animal control. Needs to say he has nine teeth left after you had his teeth cleaned and has not slowed down his eating. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? We had, well, first off, Ariel has seven teeth. She's, pr she's a proud mouth of seven teeth. Um, but we have a little guy, a little Maltese, who had no teeth, and his favorite snack in the world was ginger cookies ginger snap cookies the things that come out in the fall and those suckers are hard they're really hard um so i that that's always been that's always surprise it's always been surprising to me that you know and even when they have dentals now we do a lot with um 
our, our food here is either home cooked or raw. And if they've had a dental, we'll do cooked. Um, so it's always a soft meatloafy consistency. And so we don't have troubles, but it has been surprising to me. You know, I'll see, I'll see how they're doing and see maybe they want half their dinner. No, they want all their dinner. They want, they want all of it after they've had a dental. So it's, it's just, I think the the absence of pain or the pain that they had is so much better than whatever pain they're experiencing from the sugar. I'm sorry, from the surgery. Hi, Linda, you just went to the contest site and Monkey's House wasn't on the list. You nominated, but all we need to do is check on it, I guess. I'm surprised because um, one of our volunteers, Kristen, um, had nominated us and I went and voted. So I know we're on the list, um, but someone else said we had multiple blocks. There's a lot of rescues on the list. I wonder if they're gonna come up with a search bar or something because you don't wanna spend all of that time um, all of that time searching. But thank you for nominating us, and hopefully they'll combine them all. Hi, Nana. Do any of our pups experience canine cognitive disorder? If so, any tips? I have almost a 17-year-old Chihuahua just diagnosed with it. He starts barking and wandering most nights around 6 or 7 until we go to bed. The vet gave some sedative that you have given um, half the dose, but hate how he is on it. Thank you. Well, first off, I'm sorry. And canine cognitive disorder, or CCD, is, is tough to deal with. And we've had several dogs here with it. Um, as a matter of fact, I suspect that Bumble has it. You'll hear him every once in a while just squeak really, really loud. Um, and it's, it's doggy dementia, doggy Alzheimer's. It's, it's, it's everything that we see in people, only it happens in your dog. You, they don't recognize you. They aren't familiar with your routines anymore. And they're good during the day, but they just kind of get a little worse at night to see um, so what we do is we give um, a double dose of omega-3s um, the fish oil we'll give usually that's a once a day supplement but we'll give it twice a day um, the omega-3 fish oil is really good brain food um, really good brain food and we also will treat them with um, flaxseed lignans we'll give that once a day and uh, Oh man, it starts with an M. You give it at night for bedtime. If anyone can help me with that word, otherwise I'll come back to it. Um, I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. Nothing, nothing works right away with CCD. Everything is, is it, you know, if after a couple of weeks of trying it, is it better or is it worse? It's kind of the best way to describe it. Is it better or is it worse? Um, it, your dog is a chihuahua. So is he a chihuahua that walks well on a leash? Because one of the other things that helps is activity. It doesn't matter when the activity is. Um, I've had a few dogs with brain tumors that have CCD-like symptoms. And if they are anywhere near the door, anywhere near the leash, if they even make eye contact with me when I'm holding a leash, I'll take them for a little walk. And even if it's just down the driveway and back or halfway down the driveway and back, um, the exercise seems to connect with them. And it seems to it seems to help a little bit. The other thing is interacting with your dog. Um, I don't know how advanced the CCD is, um, but even if you're just uh, hand feeding them or um, playing a game with something smelly that's a treat, it's a piece of hot dog, you know, you know, put put it in one hand and offer both, and and see if you can get them to pick which hand it's in. Um, little tiny food games where they're paying attention where they bark and they get a response, or you do something and they give a response. Um, any way that you can interact with them will help. But it's a tough road. They, they start to bark and it's hard to comfort them. I've had some dogs that will settle a little bit with a thunder shirt. I've had other dogs where that didn't help at all. Um, there's essential oils you can try. Um, there are some supplements you can try. I honestly, I haven't found one thing that I say, oh, you need to do this or you need to do that. I always up the omega-3s just because of the science behind it. It's an excellent, excellent brain food, and I feel like it can help. I think the, the most good is the omega-3s, interacting with them and taking them for walks as much as you can, but, but it is hard. Whatever sedative you gave, if, if, if you think that half the dose is too much, break it into a quarter and try that. Over time, they do start to metabolize it faster, so the way it's working now, it, that will that won't it won't work like that forever. But try giving just a quarter and seeing if that helps.
and let me know how that helps. It's tough. It's very, very tough. You get to become very sleep deprived and sometimes a tad crazy from it. It's, it's tough. Um, Dee said her dog had it too. He got it a thunder jacket and it helped. That's great, Dee. That's great. You know, you know, what's amazing for me is, um, I had a dog that had, uh, noise phobias and her name was BG. She was, she was our, she was our personal dog or our biologic dog, if you will. <laughs> and, um, it was funny. It, if a storm was coming, we had a routine, Benadryl, a thunder shirt, and a Kong full of frozen yogurt. And it could be thundering and lightning out for two hours. She didn't, she didn't respond at all. She was calm, cool, collected, happy. And yet other dogs that would do the same thing and it wouldn't help at all. It's, it's really interesting, not necessarily fun, but it is interesting to be in a house full and see how some interventions work for some dogs and not for others. It's, it's pretty wild. Um, Kathy, you know all the pups we heard at Monkey's house, but Tiggy just wants to be doubly sure. Yes, <laughs> he does want to be doubly sure. Hi, Paul. You have the same issue with your 17-year-old Shih Tzu. She takes gabapentin and CBD oil, CBD oil, the peanut butter flavor. Sometimes trazodone works too. Good, good. Do you find a big difference in CBD oil with her? Does, is that making a difference? Okay, Brenda said, no problems voting, it was easy. You looked on the website and there you were. You just clicked on Monkey's House and it counted my vote. Thank you, that's, that's good to know. Um, that's good to know. That was the experience I had. Um, I did have to look a little bit, like I had to keep scrolling because they're not necessarily in alphabetical order. Um, but I'll contact them and see if they're gonna consolidate all of the boxes and if there's a way to find everything because that could make everybody nuts, especially if we're voting every day until February 11th. We'll, we'll all go nuts. Um, but <laughs> that's, that's the way it goes. Um, trying to see. Uh, Lucille, our little, um, our little gray pity, is doing fantastic. Uh, she has such a pep in her step. She was surrendered to the shelter um, a year ago, uh, not quite a year ago, and uh, she could hardly breathe. She had a big mass on her butt. Um, when she breathed, it was very loud. She was very overweight. And now she's all fixed up. The mass wasn't cancerous. She breathes just fine. And she's a happy dog. So she's looking for a home. And she's available for adoption um, through Tiny Paws. But I'm the one with all the answers on how she is. So if you have any questions, please message me. Um, but I can tell you she needs to be an only dog. No cats, no hamsters, no birds, no turtles. Um, and if you live in the center of town and you walk her in the morning, she will stand outside um, all of the restaurants that are doing the cooking and uh, paw at their door if they're making something yummy. <laughs> so um, uh, her Aunt Nancy fostered her for a little while this summer just so that we could get a better handle on her. She's very potty trained. She's very easy to walk. She's very sweet. Um, she's, she's very good. Unless you're going to bake a cake, then she'll try to... Or, what was she going to make a pie? She did try to break, up, break it and steal all the... All the all the ingredients um, but she uh, and Nancy has a place in, in New Hope in the center of town and Lucille just <laughs> try to break into all the really good smelling restaurants so I kind of don't blame her I think I would do the same thing myself uh, Violet's doing quite well Legend is doing well Holly had her out for a walk or a run this morning and uh, she actually just walked and she went around the place, did her patrol, and came right in. Um, let me see, Tank. Uh, I think Tank had two doses of doxycycline, and he just turned into a completely different dog. I'm, I'm so incredibly grateful because he just looked like he felt miserable. Uh, so and he just he feels so much better, and we're grateful for that. But we're still watching him like a like a like a hawk, keeping a very close eye on him. Lulu, his his. Uh, girlfriend is doing well. <laughs> Bunky's doing well. That's Rocky. He says hi. <laughs> He's doing well. <laughs> I'm trying to think. So if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask or catch them on the replay. Um, if, you, if you want to write them in, if you're uh, catching the replay and want to leave your questions, I'll go through once in a while and check and I'm happy to help with anything that I can help with. If you have any suggestions you would like to discuss on a live, please, uh, please do. Please leave suggestions. I'm very open to talking about anything that I have experience with here. Um, I'm not a veterinarian. I have no veterinary background. I was a registered nurse for many, many years. 
Um, then I started fostering dogs and fostering sick dogs. Been running Monkey's House for seven years. We do this with an integrative approach. That means we do a lot with food therapy. We do a lot with herbs. Um, we do a lot with supplements. Um, we absolutely positively use medications, drugs, antibiotics, steroids if we have to. Um, but if we can manage, we can manage with lighter, with lighter things. We do that. We, that's our first go-to. So that's a little bit about us. I can't thank you enough for joining us tonight. Hope you all have a wonderful evening and take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.